Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget-friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, I really didn't feel like cooking, so I dug around in my freezer to see what I could come up with for us for dinner. And I came across this bag of the Tyson Country Fried Steak Patties. There was only, I think, three in this bag, so I needed to use it up. And I also had about a half a bag of these Orida fast food fries, so I decided to do like chuck wagon sandwiches. If you're not familiar with chuck wagons, it's pretty much like a chicken fried steak um, on usually a hamburger bun. And I like mine pretty simple with just a little bit of mayonnaise and ketchup. My husband hadn't had one before, but knowing his taste, I figured he'd like the deluxe version, which is usually um, like lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, cheese. So I cooked the country fried steak patties in the oven according to the package instructions. For the fries, I decided to cook them in the air fryer. I used some of this steak and shake seasoning and I cooked the fries at 400 degrees for maybe about 12 to 14 minutes or so, shaking it halfway. Just cook them until they are golden brown to your liking. And while the fries were cooking, I thought, man, loaded fries just sound so, so good. So once the fries were done, I sprinkled them with some shredded cheese, added some crumbled bacon, and just popped it back in the air fryer for a couple minutes until the cheese was good and melted. All right, here are the plates. So we've got those loaded cheese fries. I added some green onions and then just some homemade ranch on the side for dipping. We've got some grapes and then our chuck wagon sandwiches. And this was delicious, so yummy, and such a quick dinner. The next night we did a meatloaf birthday dinner for my mom and my uncle. So I mentioned this before, I think a week or so ago on one of my grocery hauls, but my mom and her brother, um, they are a few years apart, but their birthdays are two days apart. And so growing up and even into adulthood, they would celebrate their birthday together. Um, but once we moved away, they kind of stopped uh, doing that and since my grandpa passed away last month, I mean, obviously my mom and uncle have been having a really hard time, especially my uncle. Um, he took care of my grandpa um, the last several years of his life. And so, he, you know, he's having a hard time. And my mom was coming over to our house to celebrate her birthday dinner. And uh, we both thought it would be a good idea to invite my uncle. And I'm so grateful that he came. And so we were able to celebrate their birthdays together. And in our family, when it's your birthday, you get to choose what you have, whether that's going out or someone cooking it. So my mom had already chosen meatloaf, fried potatoes, corn on the cob, green beans. I think that's it. Um, and she asked my uncle and he loves my meatloaf. So he was happy with the meatloaf and he requested um, mashed potatoes and fried apples. Now they both told me, you know, that's too much. Don't make everything. You know, they wanted me to make it simple, but no, when it's your birthday, you get what you want. <laughs> so yes, I made several different things, but um, let me kind of show you through uh, how I did this and how I put this together. So whenever I'm doing like family dinners or holiday dinners, I try to do as much stuff ahead as I possibly can. So for the mashed potatoes, I did like the Pioneer Woman's uh, make ahead, which is basically where you make them ahead of time and then you warm them up in the oven when you're ready to eat. I've done this the past several years for Thanksgiving and other special occasions, but I don't remember if I've ever walked you all through it before or not. So I will link the Pioneer Woman's uh, recipe down in the description box below. I don't follow it exactly but I do take inspiration from it. So here's what I'm going to use today. So another way I'm keeping it easy on myself is I'm using this bag of steam and mashed potatoes. Yes, I know I could take potatoes, wash them, peel them, cut them up, all that jazz myself. But again, got a lot going on. This is just easy. So along with this, I've got some salt, pepper, butter, and then my uncle actually suggested adding evaporated milk to his mashed potatoes. And I've also seen other YouTubers do it. So I'm going to give that a try this time. All right, so when I make mashed potatoes, I like to add my butter to the bowl, and I usually try to set it out a little bit in advance so it starts to get softened. And then I pour my cooked potatoes on top of it and allow it to sit for just a couple minutes so that the butter starts to melt. So these steaming bash, uh, bash, mashed potatoes, all you have to do is pop them in the microwave for 10 minutes. If you don't wanna use these, just boil up some potatoes, drain them really well, and then add them. I'm gonna season to taste with some salt and pepper. And just a heads up, if you use these Orida steam and mash, they 
do already have salt in them. So I held off on adding salt initially um, until I gave it a taste. So I would recommend doing the same. And then once I've added the seasonings, I'm just going to add in that milk until it's the consistency that I want. Give it a taste and you may want to add a little salt, a little pepper, a little more butter. And that's pretty much it. So I'm going to set that to the side and spray a baking dish with some cooking spray. Now, I know this is controversial, but when I'm doing family dinners and stuff like this too, sometimes I will use disposable pans. Again, just makes it easy. You can just toss it. Um, you don't have to worry, you know, about more dishes. So, um, you know, if you don't want to use the disposable pans, of course, you do not have to. I'm going to add the mashed potatoes. And then once I've got those added, I'm going to add a couple pats of butter to the top. And um, I forgot to mention earlier, I did also add in just a little bit of whipping cream. I just happened to have it on hand to thin out the potatoes just a little bit. So the potatoes are going to go into the refrigerator and you can make these up to a couple days in advance. Now, like I mentioned, I try to do as much as I can ahead of time. So what I'll typically do is a couple days before the holiday or, you know, family dinner or whatever, I will look through the recipes for what I'm planning on making and look for areas where I can go ahead and get things prepped, knock things out of the way. And then the day before, I'll go ahead and, you know, get those things done. So the day before, I went ahead and cooked up my pasta. So I cooked up some cavatappi pasta, drained it, let it cool, and then popped it in the their fridge and then I went ahead and cut up the onions that I knew I would need for my fried potatoes and my meatloaf and went ahead and put those in the fridge and that way the day of that's prepped and I don't have to worry about it couple more tips for you. So first, I try to utilize things other than the stovetop as much as I can. Um, I try to use my oven and crock pots. You could do, you know, instant pots, whatever you've got. Um, I am blessed that I've collected several crock pots of varying sizes over the years, but if you only have one, that's totally fine. Just look for ways to use it. You'd be surprised what you can cook in a crock pot. Another tip is if you have another space other than your kitchen that you can use, if you have a smaller kitchen, totally take advantage of that. Um, for me right now, I do not have a lot of counter space at all. My kitchen's actually pretty small. Um, and so I'll use my laundry room. I will lay a towel down, set my crock pot on top of the washer. Um, used to, we had a, uh, at our old house, we had a garage right off the kitchen and I would do the same thing. I would set my crock pot up or um, like a big roaster pan on the washer. So look for other spaces that you can use if you have a smaller kitchen like I do. And then the other thing that I like to do is, again, usually the day before more the night before is I'll set out my crock pots and I'll go ahead and set out like all the non-perishable things. You know, obviously if something needs to stay in the freezer, um, refrigerator, I leave that in there. But as much as I can go ahead and set out, I like to do that. One, that helps keep me organized for the next day. But two, it also helps me because, um, you know, if I'm missing an ingredient or, you know, maybe something's gone bad or whatever, kind of gives me time to get that before the event. Um, something else that I like to do is use crock pot liners. If I've got a lot of stuff going on like I do now, just like with the disposable pans, if you don't like them, don't use them. But I also um, try to go ahead and put the liners in the crock pots, get everything set up. That way I'm ready ready to go. So for the corn on the cob, I decided to try it in the crock pot. Never tried it before, but we'll definitely make this again. It was super easy and delicious. In my crock pot, I've got some frozen corn on the cob halves. I pulled these directly from the freezer. You don't need to thaw them. I added butter, milk, salt, pepper, some garlic powder, and paprika. Covered it with a lid and cooked it on high for two hours. I did go through after an hour and just rotate the corn. And then that's it. Super, super easy. You can use whatever seasonings you like. You could also do this with fresh corn on the cob, I'm sure. Next are the fried apples. I decided to try these in the crock pot as well. I'll have this recipe and all the recipes from today's video linked in the description box below for you, by the way. So in this crock pot here, I've got some apples that were peeled and sliced. You can, of course, do it yourself. I took help from the grocery store and bought, you know, just the pre-sliced and peeled apples in the produce section. But again, just do whatever your preference is. I tossed the apples with some cornstarch and then I added brown sugar, sugar, cinnamon, vanilla extract, 
butter and lemon juice gave it another toss and then you cook this on low for two hours i did go through about halfway through and give it a stir now i loved the flavor of the apples we all did everyone loved the flavor of them but some were still a little too some so it really probably needed another hour um, of cooking time for us our personal preference but these were really yummy next i made crock pot macaroni and cheese which my mom nor my uncle requested it, but all of us kids love it. So I went ahead and made it. I first saw this on Kristen Stepp's channel maybe a couple years or so ago, and I've made it so many times since then. Highly recommend it. It is delicious and it's easy. So in this crock pot, I've got the cooked cavatappi pasta. And I forgot to mention earlier when I showed it to you, when I cooked the pasta um, and drained it, I did add in just a little bit of oil so that the pasta didn't clump together. So I've added that cooked pasta to the crock pot. I am adding evaporated milk, milk, some shredded cheddar cheese, Velveeta cheese, and a little bit of butter. Now I halved the recipe and the recipe does call for salt. I would hold off adding the salt though and add it, you know, if you feel like it, it needs it afterwards. Cover this with a lid and cook this on low for about two hours. Give it a stir after an hour and it's ready. Next up are the fried potatoes. I've shared how I make this before. I'll link that video down below, but I'll quickly go through it again. So in this skillet here, I've got my potatoes. What I did was several hours before dinner, I washed the russet potatoes really well, peeled them, placed them into a bowl of cold water, popped that into the fridge. Once it was ready to start cooking dinner, I drained the water off, patted them dry really well with some paper towels. To the skillet, I added a little bit of oil and a tiny little bit of bacon grease, brought it up to heat over medium high heat, added my chopped up onions I showed you earlier and the sliced potatoes, and then um, try to get them in a single layer as much as possible. Cover that with a lid and cook them on medium high for 10 minutes. Don't remove the lid. You're letting that steam from the potatoes get them nice and tender. After 10 minutes, remove the lid, flip the potatoes over, cook them another maybe 10 to 12 minutes until the potatoes are tender and brown to your liking. Season to taste with salt and pepper. My mom requested green beans, but only a couple of us like them. So I just did one of the large cans of Allen's Italian green beans, drained it, added it to the crock pot, added some water and chicken bouillon powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and just a little bit of olive oil and cooked these on high for four hours. I made some cornbread, added a small batch, which makes a six inch cast iron skillet. I'll have the recipe typed out in the description box below for you. Now for the mashed potatoes to finish them off, a couple hours before you are wanting to eat them, you'll wanna set them out at room temperature. And then when you're ready to bake them, cook them at 350 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes until they're warmed all the way through. Last but not least, I've got my meatloaf. I've also shared how to make this before. I'll link that video down below. I tripled my normal recipe. So I used a total of three pounds of ground beef. For my meatloaf, I do ground beef, egg, breadcrumbs, a little milk, salt, pepper, garlic, onion, Worcestershire sauce, and ketchup. I think that's everything. I mix it together just until it's incorporated. And what I like to do is add uh, everything except the meat to a bowl, get that mixed up really well, and then add the ground beef so that it's not overmixed. Place that into a baking dish. Sometimes I form it into a loaf, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I use a loaf pan, sometimes I don't. Um, but just add it to your pan, and then I make a glaze with ketchup, Worcestershire, brown sugar, and a little bit of barbecue sauce. Add that, and then bake it at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes to an hour, or until the meatloaf is at least 160 degrees, and then you'll want to let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before you serve it. All right, and here is my plate. I got a little bit of the fried apples, the corn on the cob, a piece of cornbread, meatloaf, the macaroni and cheese, and fried potatoes, and everything was delicious, if I do say so myself. So for the birthday cakes, my uncle requested a German chocolate cake, and my mom said that was fine with her as well, uh, but I know not everyone in our family loves coconut, so I made, um, I just took one box of the German chocolate mix, and I distributed it amongst four six inch cake pans. And so then I did two six inch layers of German chocolate um, cake with the coconut pecan icing for my uncle. And then I did two of the German chocolate cake 
layers with just regular chocolate frosting for my mom's cake. And my uncle absolutely loves horses, loves horses. So I got these little horse um, cupcake picks on Amazon. And then my mom, um, she loves the color purple and she loves flowers. So I got this little kit on Amazon and my little sister decorated the cakes. And that was our birthday celebration. The next day started spring break and since my little brother and sister were over at our house already for the birthday dinner, they went ahead and stayed the next few days with my husband and I. So um, I asked them if they had any special requests of things for me to make and my little sister absolutely loves my sandwiches. I don't know why, um, but she requested them. So we did like make your own Subway night. So I just kind of set a bunch of stuff out and everybody made their sandwich the way that they wanted. I also set out an assortment of chips and we had bought these Doritos dips, I don't know, a month or so ago. We just hadn't tried them. My husband and I really liked the nacho cheese dip and my sister loved the Cool Ranch dip. So here's my sandwich. I got a little bit of each of the dips for me to try. And for my sandwich, I ended up just doing a turkey bacon ranch with lettuce and tomato sandwich. And that was our dinner this night. The kiddos also requested crockpot chicken tacos with copycat Taco Bell cheesy fiesta potatoes. I've shared both of these many times before my channel. In fact, I think I just shared the potatoes like last week or the week before. So I'll link the videos in the description box below for you if you'd like to check those out. Both of these recipes are super easy and delicious. This was our dinner this night. The next afternoon, I took the kiddos home, and all I'd had that day was just one of the little cheeseburgers from McDonald's, and so both my husband and I were hungry. He hadn't had lunch. I had a gift card to Texas Roadhouse, so we stopped there and had dinner. We started out with their super yummy rolls and their honey butter, and then for the entree, I got their chicken tender salad. My husband got, I apologize, I didn't get a picture of his plate, but he got the filet medallions with sauteed onions and mushrooms, a side salad, and loaded baked potato. Now, my salad was ginormous. I took the other half home and had it for lunch the next day, and my husband ended up taking his baked potato home, and we used it for dinner. Um, I think it was the next night. For dinner the next night, I made California club salad with baked potatoes. I believe I've shared this salad before. Maybe I haven't, but I'll type it out down below. I'm not sure why it's called California club salad, but I got this recipe from my mother-in-law. So first up, I've got some lettuce, some pre-cooked bacon, cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes, some Monterey Jack cheese that I cubed. I have some chicken tenders. These are the grilled Italian chicken tenders recipe from Plain Chicken. I like to meal prep these. Um, I'll link that video down below. So I've got those. And then the recipe calls for celery. I hate celery, can't stand it. So I use cucumber instead. And then for the salad dressing, you basically mix sour cream, mayonnaise, honey, and Dijon mustard together. So here's everything I'm gonna use for the salad. And I apologize, I fib, you also need some green onions. I forgot to set those out. One of the things that makes this salad super yummy are the homemade croutons. So the recipe calls for sourdough, but I use whatever bread I've got on hand. I've used uh, hamburger buns, hot dog buns. Today I had a ciabatta roll that needed to be used up. So I'm gonna use that, just butter the bread and then sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on it and bake this in the oven until the bread is nice and toasted and then dice them up into croutons. All right, so here's the finished salad. I just added all of my salad ingredients, chopped up to my bowl, added my dressing, and gave it a really good toss. And then here's my plate. So Gary was at the gym this night. When I ate dinner, he ate later. I just took a russet potato, washed it really well, um, rubbed it with some oil, seasoned it with some salt and pepper, cooked it in the air fryer at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes, gave it a flip, cooked it for another 20 minutes until it was tender, and then added some butter, salt, pepper, shredded cheese, um, cooked bacon, and green onions, and then I've got the salad. And for Gary, he had the loaded baked potato left over from Texas Roadhouse the night before, so we just warmed that up, and then he had a big salad on the side, and that was our dinner this night. For the last dinner in this week's video, it was St. Patrick's Day, so we did corned beef and cabbage. Now, I could be wrong about this, but according to my understanding, I don't believe corned beef and cabbage is traditional Irish cuisine. Uh, but here in the States, for St. Patrick's Day, a lot of people eat corned beef and cabbage. It's kind of traditional, so that's what we're going to make today. I like to do it in the crock pot. To the bottom of my crock pot, I'm going to add some onion that I just gave a rough chop, and I just kind of like to separate it so it makes a little bed for the corned beef. 
So I got this on sale from Aldi. This is a corned beef brisket. I'm going to remove it from the package and lay it on the onions. And then I'm going to add the seasoning packet that comes along with the brisket. Next, I'm going to add in a couple of bay leaves along with some minced garlic. Next, we're gonna add water and you wanna add enough to where it just starts to cover the brisket. Now we're gonna cover this with a lid. The recipe said to cook this on low for the first three hours, uh, but I got it started a little bit later than I wanted, so I cooked it on high for two hours. After the initial cooking time, we're gonna add in some potatoes. I used some russet potatoes that I washed and cut into chunks. We're going to also add in some carrots. You could use just regular carrots and peel them and cut them down, but I had some baby carrots I needed to use up, so I'm gonna add those and then cover it with a lid and cook it for another three hours. Next, I've got some cabbage that I cut into wedges. I'm gonna add that to the crock pot, place the lid back on it and cook it for another two hours. Once your brisket is cooked all the way through and is really good and tender and your veggies are tender, you're gonna remove the brisket, set it to the side and allow it to rest for about 15 minutes and then you wanna cut it against the grain. Here is the finished plate. So we've got some of the corned beef, the veggies, and then to serve alongside it, I did some horseradish mustard and sprinkled a little bit of salt and pepper over everything. And that corned beef was so super tender. It was, uh, it was delicious. And I'm not usually a corned beef fan, but this was so yummy. All right, that is it for today's video. I hope you liked this video and you got some dinner ideas from it. If you did enjoy it, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.